Okay, so Green's theorem okay, is an attempt to connect the line integral of a closed curve with the double integral of the plane enclosed by the curve. Okay, now what I said to you may not make any much sense, but I think it's best that so I explain everything carefully, then you understand what Green's theorem is. Do I must say that this is uh, the point in the, in the lesson or in vector integral calculus where the terms are really very important. So you really need to pay attention to the terms such as close, simple, or orientation, you know, line integral, all the terms. And I'll explain to you. So I hope that you know you, you pay attention. Okay. And also you better get your double integrals in check because we're gonna use them. Okay, so position vector RT equals to component functions XTI plus YTJ. Okay, this is a position vector and we know that they um how to say it? The position vector generates a curve, right? Okay, a curve, so the curve goes like that, like this. Let's just say the curve goes like this, and t is the parameter. So as t varies, we paint out the curve like that, using the position vectors from the origin to a point on the curve. Now, we also say that if the initial point, if the initial point is equal to the terminal point, okay, this curve would be called close as it seems over here like this, the curve in this close, not a problem at all. Okay, now we will introduce something new right here which is called the orientation on when the curve is positively orient oriented or negatively oriented. Okay, what does that mean? Now, if it's positively oriented, the curve goes in a anti-clockwise direction as t varies, okay? So as t goes in this direction, it would paint out the curve going in a counterclockwise direction. So the curve will go like this. Okay, it goes like that over here, like this over here, and like this over here. Okay? This would be positively oriented. Not to be confused with positive would be all thing that is clockwise, but that's not the case. Positively is anti-clockwise when it goes over here. Direction is very important because like I like you will soon find out that it does matter on whether you go this way or you go this way. Okay, so we got close, we got positively oriented. Now we've got one more which we need to define, and that is called simple and non-simple. For that, I will draw another diagram. Okay, now a curve is non-simple, okay, if, if, if it crosses itself. So if I've got a curve like that, okay, that means there's a certain for a certain for a certain A and B, okay, the position vector would be the same. Okay, does that make sense? Because they will meet over here like this. So if this is the case, it is called non-simple. A simple curve, right, it's just basically like that. It just doesn't cross itself. So if the curve crosses itself, it is called a non-simple curve. However, you might be asking that when we have a closed curve, does it mean that it's non-simple? Because the curve, in a way, it does crosses itself at the initial and terminal points. Well, this is the only exception, okay? If the curve only crosses itself once, Okay, and that is the initial and the terminal point. It is still called simple, okay, and it is called a simple closed curve. Okay, it only really, really crosses itself once, and that's where the initial and terminal, terminal points equate. Non simple, it just crosses itself, but a non simple closed curve, okay, it's like that. Can you see? The initial and terminal points crosses itself. Just like you do over here, but it is not simple because it crosses itself more than once. One over here and a second time over here. So this is a non-simple closed curve. Okay, so with all this in check, we need to go again one more time to talk about the interior and the exterior of a curve C. Let's just call this the curve C like that. Okay, so we got a curve C like this, okay? Now, the exterior of the curve C is all the points that are basically not inside or is not inside the, the curve, the closed curve. So this, this part we call the exterior of C. Common sense, yeah? And inside the curve is called the interior of C. Though, we must say one more thing that C is neither in the interior nor in the exterior, okay? So in a way, if we have to just cut this diagram out, we will get C, a ring, we get the interior and the exterior. Okay, so having said all this, now it's time to move along to Green's theorem, which says this. Okay, suppose we have a curve 
C, okay, which is simple, close, and, okay, sorry, simple, let me just check, yeah, I want to get these definitions correct. Simple, close, positively oriented, and piecewise smooth. Okay, so we need to have a curve C, which in fact this hand settles all these equations, okay, I'm sorry, all these conditions, it is simple, it is close, positively oriented, and it's piecewise smooth, okay, and and area D, okay, consisting of C and exterior, sorry, interior, I'm my fault. C and interior of C. Okay, so what does D mean? Well, D is just simply the, the area over here and it is consisting like that, okay? Because why? You will see in a minute that the double integral is gonna come right up, okay? Now, this is the condition of C, this is the condition of D, of D and we got one more condition if you can bear with me. And then the vector field, okay, vector field F, okay, where we will express F as the component function small f x y i plus g function g x y j is continuous in d very important okay so the vector field is continuous in d now if all these conditions is satisfied we will have this green's theorem okay would say that the line integral okay, of f dr okay, is equal to the double integral okay, okay, of, the first, of the first partial derivative of g, okay, which is one of the component functions of f with respect to x, subtract by the first partial derivative of f with respect to y, and take the double integral of that over the area D. And there you have it, Green's theorem. Okay? Quite big. Okay, though I must say that it's very important. Now, all these conditions must be satisfied. In particular, pay careful attention to this one over here. The vector field, okay, must be continuous in D. That means in the interior of C and including C itself, whatever points you pick for the vector field, okay, it must be defined. Okay? I mean, that would also imply that the component functions f, small f, and g are also defined with whatever points that you pick, okay? And there you have it. Now, a few other additions to the problem. I hope you've got all these conditions. Look it up. You can just check on the, on the page. It's up there. Okay, Green's theorem is that. Now, a few minor adjustments to it. Okay, now, closed curve, right? It's a closed curve. Now, there's another way to write this, and you'll see it. As, as time goes by, is that if it's a closed curve, we will usually, okay, put a circle inside the integral sign, so we will get something like that. Okay, we will put a circle in the integral sign, just to say that the curve is closed, okay, because it is closed here. Why? Because it's one of the conditions of Green's theorem. Though, evaluating the integral doesn't change at all, okay, you still evaluate it the same way. Okay, and in terms of notation, another way that we will write it, okay, we will write it as this. dx plus, sorry, plus function g, x, y, okay, dy. Okay, now sometimes we will write it like this, y, because Taking it from here, okay, r is x i plus y i, okay? So if we just simply take dr, we get dx plus dy, sorry, i and j over here like that. And then we want to take the dot product. So we write it like this immediately to get this one over here, okay? But this would still mean the same thing because this one would still equals to the double integral of this thing over here, okay, the first partial derivative of g with respect to x, take away the first partial derivative of f with respect to y, um, integrate that over the area d here, and d is the area over there, okay? So this is um, Green's theorem, okay? 
quite a big one and there's things that are quite tricky just make sure that you the first partial derivative that you take is g which is the second one over here and you 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 differentiate that with respect to y and it's a minus well not a plus okay and you take the first partial derivative of f okay now the proof i must say is going to be quite difficult okay but i will attempt my best to do it you know in the sound super lessons but right now i present to you green's theorem over here and over here and make sure the conditions which i remind again it must be a simple it must be closed it must be positively oriented okay it must be a piecewise smooth on top of that the vector function f must be continuous in the interior of c okay and including c okay so there you have it uh example coming up and yeah let's let's for you